Sutra 2.22 Shartam prati nashtam api anashtam tat anya shadharanatvat Shartam means whose purpose has been fulfilled, who has attained an end, successful, satisfied. Prati means against, in opposition to. Nashtam means destroyed, disappeared, lost sight of. Api means although. Anashtam means not disappeared, not destroyed, not lost. Tat means that. Anya means to others. Sadharanatvat means average, being normal. Shartam prati nashtam api anashtam tatanya shadharanatvat The relationship with nature ceases for emancipated beings, its purpose having been fulfilled, but its processes continue to affect others. As soon as the vehicles of nature which act as agents of the seer, accomplish their task of freeing him from his mental and sensory prison, they are quietened, having accomplished their purpose. The bond between the seer and nature comes to an end. Nature ceases to exist for him. He is able to perceive his own form, or swarupa. However, the vehicles of nature, elements, their subtle qualities, cosmic intelligence, individual self, ego, intelligence, senses of perception and organs of action are common to all. So for others who remain caught up in the world's turmoils, the bondage endures. Sutra 2.23 Swa Swami Shaktiyo Swarupo Palabdhi Hetu Sam Yoga Swa means one's own, of being, owned, nature. Swami means owner, master, lord, seer. Shaktiyo means strength of Prakriti and Purusha, power of the two. Swarupa means form, one's own. Upalabdhi means to find, obtain, perceive, to see, recognize, to experience. Hetu means cause, reason, purpose. Samyoga means Union, conjunction. Swa Swami Shaktiyo Swarupo Palabdhi Hetu Samyoga The conjunction of the seer with the seen is for the seer to discover his own true nature. The powers of Purusha and Prakriti are intended for self-realization. The purpose of their contact is the unfolding of their inherent powers and the seer's discovery of his own essential nature. This sutra makes clear that a desire for fusion or a close association or integration between the owner, the owning and the owned has existed since the beginning of civilization. By the light of pure knowledge, the owner, the seer, perceives and cognizes whatever is to be perceived or cognized through his association with nature. If this association is fed by ignorance, it leads the master towards enjoyment, desire and ailments and binds him. But if non-attachment is developed, it leads to detachment or renunciation, vairagya. If the master maintains constant watchful awareness of his consciousness, associates with nature without attachment, 
and remains a witness. Nature or Prakriti leads its owner, the soul, to freedom, moksha. Sutra 2.24 Tasya hetu avidya Tasya means its conjunction. Hetu means cause, ground, purpose. Avidya means ignorance, lack of awareness, lack of spiritual knowledge. Tasya hetu avidya Lack of spiritual understanding, or avidya, is the cause of the false identification of the seer with the seen. In Sutra 2.18, it was said that the mingling of Prakriti with Purusha can either lead to emancipation or stop our progress by involving us in desires and emotions. This Sutra underlies the fact that avidya, lack of awareness or ignorance, is at the root of the confusion that brings us suffering as well as pleasure. Vidya, or discriminative knowledge, destroys ignorance, for a fire will burn only as long as fuel lasts. What is right knowledge? When discernment banishes doubt, pure understanding begins the process of disownment and detachment which releases us from the shackles of possessing and being possessed. 